Hey, happy travelers. This is Kelly and Kevin from The Awkward Tourist. We are back with another awkward travel chat. This is episode number six, I think. I believe it is. <laughs> yep. If you saw us last week, we were talking about our trip to Egypt, um, where we went to Cairo, and we originally wanted that to just be one talk, but we talked a little too long about Cairo, so we're going to do the second half of the trip this week. So if you're new to these travel chats, um, we are talking about some of our past travels to give a little bit of travel inspiration for when it is safe to travel again, and we'll be giving you some tips um, if you decide to plan a trip to that place in the future. So today we'll be talking about our Egypt trip um, outside of Cairo, all the temples that we visited, our Nile cruise, Aswan and Luxor. If you saw last week or if you haven't watched that video yet, we'll go ahead and link it. But Egypt was a very challenging trip for us. It was amazing, but it was it was tough. It was a hard one, definitely. It wasn't, at least the way that we did it, it wasn't very relaxing, um, very rewarding, great cultural experience, you know, something we definitely won't ever forget, um, but there was a little bit of struggle and it was definitely not one of the easier places that we've traveled. On the second half of our trip, we took a flight from Cairo to the city of Aswan, which is the furthest city to the south in Egypt. It's pretty close to the border of Sudan. It's a couple hours away by car. Yep, and it is right where the big dam that they have installed in the 1950s um, is the dams up the Nile, and that brings power to a lot of the cities in Egypt. The Nile is a pretty big river to dam up. So if you saw our video last week, you saw that we had a friend in Cairo who kind of showed us around, and she told us that she knew someone in Aswan, and she would um, hook us up with that person so they could show us around. And that person ended up meeting us at the airport and got us a transport and everything like that, um, and kind of arranged our whole trip while we were in Aswan, which I think we were there for two or three days. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. Yeah. But it was a, it was a difficult <laughs> our time in Aswan. <laughs> that we we th how can how can I put this? So we were under the impression that it was just a friend that was going to be kind of showing us around. Uh, what it ended up being was we were hiring more of a tour guide and we didn't really realize that until pretty much the last day that we were there. Yeah, when he asked for all this money and yeah, it, it <laughs> we was, were like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a tough situation, but we, we met, he met us right off the, um, right off the plane and arranged a taxi for us or a private car to take us to our hotel that we had already prearranged. And I thought the price for the car was a little expensive, you know, and and some of the things that we were doing just seemed like it was a little expensive. Um, but we didn't know that we were actually hiring a tour guide, which was... It ended up being fine. Like, he showed us a lot of cool things, and it, but they ended up being really touristy and... Yeah. And things like he took us to this guy's house where they he had like little crocodiles that we could hold and yeah, to would... kind of touristy places to eat and things like that. And we just didn't realize, we were under the impression the whole time that he was just a friend who was showing us around. Yeah. In our last video, we talked about our time in Cairo and we highly recommend that you get a guide to go to a lot of these places um, because it's just a really hard place to travel on your own. Um, so... It was nice having a guide. I just wish that we had known that it was a guide so we could have talked a little bit about what we wanted to do and what we didn't want to do. Yeah. And talk about the price beforehand because we kind of just were like, oh, wow, this is actually a tour guide that we've been having show us around the last couple of days. Yeah. It ended up being fine. Like, it yeah. wasn't a bad or, like, he wasn't trying to scam us or anything. We just didn't know. Yeah, it was just <laughs> it was kind just of a so weird, stupid. weird communication yeah, situation. Yeah, like, it, it just, we had this moment where it just dawned on us like oh my god this guy is a tour guide he's not <laughs> yeah all this stuff that we thought was like just somebody being a friend yeah. and a friend of a friend was like oh we actually hired this guy wait a minute but one of the really good things he did end up doing for us was that we wanted to take a tour down to the temple of uh, abu simbel yep. um which is like three hours by car south and you had to arrange that ahead of time with um they, you have to take a convoy down to the to the temple because yeah. I guess the road is kind of dangerous. There's people like yeah, it was it was really crazy. It 
if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll show a couple different pictures of this temple. Um, it's a really incredible temple in Egypt. Um, but to get to it, you have to drive through the middle of the desert for like three hours and there's a convoy, like a military escorted convoy that goes I, at certain times during the day. At least it was when we went in 2016. Yeah. Uh, so we had to have that prearranged. You could go by private car, like we had some someone just drove us in their car, but it had to um, be at a certain time. Yeah, it had to be arranged that you were going to be in this convoy. Yeah. So he did end up doing that for us, which was... Nice, because I don't know, we might have had a more difficult time doing that on our own. Yeah, we got picked up from our hotel um, at like 3.30 in the morning, and I know the hotel arranged some little to-go breakfast for us, and we went and met all these other cars, and there was like, you know, military with like AK-47s, it was really a pretty crazy experience, and I would say there was like 15 cars that all went and we just drove into the desert. It was like a scene out of like Mad Max or something. It was really kind of yeah. kind of crazy. And we went through all of these checkpoints. Um, and we had mentioned this before, but five years prior to going to Egypt was when they had their revolution. Um, so we went in, what year was it, 2016? 2016. Yeah, so it, it may be a little different now, but at the time it was there was definitely a lot of military presence. Um, so with this convoy, we would go through a lot of different military checkpoints, you know, with guards and towers, and it was it was pretty pretty surreal. We didn't feel unsafe at any time, though, in Egypt. No, it was just a lot different than, yeah. you know, if you take a road trip in the U.S. or some other Western country. But this temple, it had been where the lake is now, the man-made lake. Uh, so actually, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, mm -hmm. and ar archaeologists and all these people, they decided to move it because otherwise it was going to be submerged when they put this dam up. Yeah, and I don't know how they moved it. Because, piece by piece, it's huge. Yeah, it's gigantic. Um, and there's this just really crazy big front to it with these huge entryways. And it was, it was really neat. We weren't actually able to film inside of it. Um, they were pretty strict on the cameras. I tried to, but they made me delete it. <laughs> yeah, Kelly got caught. Um, I got busted. <laughs> but it was really impressive because all the hi hieroglyphics still had paint on them, and it was just really, really well preserved. Yeah, that's definitely super beautiful. A must do if you go to Egypt is the Abu Simbel Temple. Yeah, it was a long ways away. It was definitely a big effort, but it was super worth it, and it was really cool. Unfortunately, that was pre us being on Instagram really, so we don't have that many quality photos. No, not really. Um, which is unfortunate. I would honestly go back to Egypt just so we could get some amazing photos and videos. Yeah, we could definitely do it well. It was, it was a really cool trip. Let's see, so yeah, definitely go to Abu Simbel if you get the chance. Um, man, tell them about the hotel in Aswan. Yeah, so we stayed at this hotel um, and I had in my notes that it was four star. I do like a little travel journal just so I can remember some details. Um, and I wrote down that it was a four star hotel. Four star in Egypt is much different, but this place was really bad. I don't know in whose book that yeah, was a four there, star hotel. There was a pretty big cockroach problem. Um, <laughs> and we changed, I think, two rooms or maybe even three rooms at the same place because we're like, dude, there's cockroaches everywhere. You know, and like the guy who was showing us to our room was like smashing them with his foot when they came in. It was, it was, it was yeah. pretty bad. And I mean, it's Egypt, so it's like, what, you know, you, you kind of, you can't really escape that. But like, the really nice hotel was only like $20 more. We said yeah. that in our last video. So it's just, like, just pay. Yeah, like, if you go, <laughs> just pay a little more for the nicer hotel. Because yeah. Because it, it makes a big difference. We... When we got in, we I think we were going to Abu Simbel the next day, so we had yeah. to get up really, really early, really so we couldn't early. like change hotels or anything. No. And um, I took a shower, and a cockroach about this big ran over my foot while I was in the shower, and I screamed bloody murder. Yeah, I, I, I literally <laughs> thought that somebody was breaking in through the bathroom window and was like trying to attack her. That's how loud she screamed. <laughs> I wasn't, I'm not scared. It just surprised me. You look down, you see yeah, this came, gnarly cockroach. It came right out of the drain and oh, like ran across so her gross. foot. It was, it was oh, pretty. Oh, it was, yeah, that was, that was an experience for sure. But it was fine. We were only there for two nights? Two? Yeah, two or three nights. Yeah. 
We didn't spend a ton of time in Aswan. The guide slash friend took us across the river to a Nubian village. Yeah, and he was Nubian as well. Um, so that was kind of cool. A lot of the people in northern Egypt um, aren't really Nubian, so we got to see a little bit of both cultures, which was really cool. So he took us by boat to this traditional Nubian village. Yeah, in Upper Egypt, which is really confusing because Upper Egypt is actually the southern part of Egypt and Lower Egypt is the northern part. Yeah. It has something to do with the Nile and the way that it flows. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. To, um, it, it kind of was like the Chefchouan village in Morocco. It was all yeah. blue and colorful and there were just like camels walking down the street. <laughs> just yeah. like... Okay, there's a camel. It was a really cool experience to walk through there. And at that point, we still thought it was just a friend that was kind of showing us around. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool. And we bought some spices and I think, you know, a couple little goods and stuff. And it was, it was, it was definitely a cool experience, but really blue, beautiful houses. And yeah, there was camels that I can only assume were like going home for the day because there wasn't like a person that was guiding them and they were just like running through the street. Like you do which was kind of crazy. There wasn't any really cars in the street, but there was like a dozen camels running around. The landscape of Southern Egypt was really cool. We got to go out on a little boat. Mm -hmm. um, something a lot of people do down there is go on feluccas, which is a traditional Egyptian kind of sailboat. We didn't end up doing that. We went for a bigger Nile cruise, which we'll get to. Um, but it's really beautiful, especially like late in the day, if you take a little boat out on the Nile, it's yeah. like the desert landscape and the like date palm trees and red earth. It's really, really pretty. Yeah, it was, it was really beautiful. Definitely. We, remember we went to that like botanical garden? Yep. Yeah. They, that was something that was arranged for us as well. We kind of walked through a little botanical garden and then we went to that Nubian village that we talked about. Um, and then... The, the guide's name was Bassam. I don't know if we mentioned that before, but Bassam had a friend and we went to his house and had some tea. And then they brought out some crocodiles. Um, there's a lot of crocodiles in the Nile. I don't really know how many of them are there now, but in Egyptian culture, that's kind of a thing. Um, so he had some crocodiles that he was raising and then they were like, he kind of got them out and showed them to us. And then we were kind of realizing at this point, like, oh, this is kind of like a tour where he's showing us these crocodiles. And then we You're had... just dumb. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, Egypt is hard. But, um, but then we went to a place that they provided this big spread for dinner for us. Um, and it was super tasty, but... Yeah, on a rooftop and yep. we got a hookah and yeah, just it was kinda... really cool. I mean, despite all the difficulties of going to Egypt it was still a really cool experience yeah yeah it was it was definitely a really cool experience but by the end of our time in Aswan we were just very tired and very overwhelmed you know with cockroaches and kind of yeah all the crazy culture shock and then also kind of realizing that we were like hiring somebody which cost a little more than we were expecting when we thought it was just a friend so it was just kind of a, a low point in the trip for us um and I remember both of us kind of just being like, man, we just want to get out of Egypt. We don't really want to do this anymore. Yeah, at that point we had been there for about a week, so we yeah. were just like and tired. Just, <laughs> just not feeling it at all. But. Yeah, it was a, a lot of culture shock, just a lot of things we didn't expect. And it was great, but just challenging. It was very, very challenging. Yeah, definitely go to Egypt. It's amazing. It's a huge culture shock, and it's not easy to travel there, but it's very rewarding. Yes, so. we we actually loved, I'd love to go back yeah, to I would, have I would totally. another experience. There. And knowing what I'd be walking into, I think it would be a different experience too. But you know? let's get to the coolest part of the trip, yeah. the Nile cruise. Yeah, so from Aswan, we booked a three or four day. I don't remember. Yeah, it's like three nights, maybe four days, cruise down the Nile River. Now, um, as I said before, you can do a Felucca cruise where you spend the night on the boat which is something really popular and looks really cool, except the facilities are a lot. Like, they don't even have bathrooms on board, I don't think. Yeah, it's very, like, very traditional. Um, and I think you, like, camp or set up hammocks on the side. Which is fine, but the not having the bathroom thing on a boat, I was like, uh, let's, let's go, go big or go home. Yeah, we thought about doing the, is it Fluka? Feluca. Feluca, um, on a sailboat option. I'm really glad that we didn't, though, because it was... 
it, it would have been really tough. You know, we were definitely pretty yeah, tired at that and point in the trip. strung out by it. But we got onto this river cruise. Yeah. If you've ever seen like one of the Viking ones, even smaller than that. Yeah, I think it was three stories or something like that. Um, but it was it was super nice. And I remember when we checked on, they were playing the Titanic soundtrack, like that Celine Dion song. <laughs> and that was super funny for us because we're like, well, we're getting on a on a ship right now. Yeah. Um, it's not it's not the best choice <laughs> <rest of> music. <laughs> but um but it was it was really, really nice. And they had a waterfall shower and a king bed and all the food was included with it and great yeah. air conditioning. Um and then we also had a tour guide that came along with the package that we booked as well. Yeah, we were assigned a tour guide, like each group had their own guide. Not that many people were vis visiting Egypt at the time, so there weren't that many people on the ship. It was mostly Germans. Yeah. Mostly German people. Yeah, there wasn't a lot. Yeah, but our guide was incredible. Like, we just hung out on the ship, and then when we stopped in the ports, we, um, he told us what time to meet him, and then he they took us everywhere, and everything was arranged, and it was just so much easier than the first week in Egypt. Yeah, it, it was through Memphis Tours. I remember that part. Um, yes. So if you ever go to that area, look up Memphis Tours. Um, yeah, I still have his business card in my wallet just in case we ever yeah. go back. Mohammed Imam, man, that guy yeah, was he awesome. He was like an Egyptologist, like that's what he went to school for. Yeah, he I think really, really good. I think at least at the point that we were at, he saved the trip for us because yeah. we were really bummed out. But he just was a super awesome person, great tour guide, kind of gauged what we wanted to do, gave us information, you know, and would communicate with some of the other people that were trying to sell us stuff. It was just a, a really yeah. awesome experience. So we got on the, the boat in Aswan, right? Yep. Yeah, we got... He actually met us at our hotel, uh, Mohammed Imam, the tour guide, and we ran, went around a little bit in Aswan before we went to the boat. Did we drop our bags off first and then... Uh, I'm not really sure, but I know we went to the granite quarry. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. So the obelisks in Egypt, um, the big, it's like the Washington Monument is an, is an obelisk. So yeah. you see those all over Egypt. Those are all made of one single block of granite. So we went to one of these quarries where they were um, chiseling out one of these obelisks and the thing cracked. So they had to leave it there because... Yeah, so it was just kind of an archaeological site now um, where this giant obelisk was. But they'd actually... I mean, I guess they'd mine them from the quarry and then they'd move them down the Nile to the different cities in Luxor or Cairo or Giza or wherever they would, would go. Yeah, it was really, really cool to see. It was massive, this thing. Um, so we got to walk around there and like, I'm glad he has all these notes because yeah. <laughs> for this one anyway, we went a lot of places and I don't remember all the names of them. So yeah, we went and also saw the dam and they talked a little bit about that being built, which was built in the... 60s. 1950s or 1960s and that was really cool um, it was heavily guarded because they did have that uprising a couple years earlier so they really didn't want people to mess with the dam um, and then we went to the temple of Philae as well which was on this little island and that was really cool um, the temples on the Nile cruise were the best that we saw Definitely. We, we, yeah. That was the main thing. We would cruise down the Nile and we'd stop at all these archaeological sites along the way um, and then end in Luxor. So that was kind of what the tour was all about. And the guide would just come to us at the beginning of the day and sit down with us at breakfast or whatever and be like, okay, this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to go to this temple, then we're going to come back and relax, and then at night we're going to go to this temple, you know. And it was, it was, amazing to see all these different sites it was yeah the yeah. cruise was a little bit of a splurge for us but it was so worth it it was like the highlight of the trip because we saw so much and we had the guide and he just it's cool it would have been cool to see the temples as it as they were but having a guide explain you know all the hieroglyphics and the history and everything was really really cool yeah like we said, he was an Egyptologist, so he really knew his history. Um, and it was just the two of us and I think one other person that was with us. So it was a very intimate tour. Yeah. It was our, our group. He would go through as well to the different sites and talk about the different periods and all the different people that had been 
controlling Egypt at that point because it was taken over by Persians and Greeks and Romans and Arabs and French and English and then it finally went back to Egyptians in like the 1950s or whatever. Yeah, it was really cool seeing the layers of history because you think, oh, Egypt, ancient Egyptian history. Well, you go to Egypt and you see the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, but then you'll see that the Christians came in and literally carved yeah. out the faces of the Egyptian gods because it was blasphemy or yeah. whatever. Um, so they would they would literally chisel out these ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics because they showed, uh, you know, icons, gods other than yeah, it was the Christian God, and then and then on top of that, you would see you know, John Smith eighteen twenty three would mm -hmm. write his name or whatever. So it was like all these crazy layers of history. Yeah, we saw one temple that it said Napoleon Bonaparte, where he had wrote his name when the French took over Egypt. So that was really yeah, cool to see really that. Yeah, it was really insane. They I, and some of them they drew like Italian frescoes over the. Hieroglyphics. It was or like Roman murals. It was just. It was a really interesting, you know, blend of history with everything. But we saw we saw at different places. We saw mummified crocodiles and some you know incredible temples. Some that were like eighty feet tall. Um, the one we went to, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, um, but it had these huge pillars that were like a hundred feet tall. And they got into how they built it, which was really cool. They actually started from the ground up and then pushed sand in and then built it higher and higher because these giant columns and pillars that you would walk around were like, there was no way that they could build that back then without a crane. Um, so we learned a little bit about that and that was really neat. But just exploring all these temples and, and stuff was really awesome. Yeah, we went to the temple of Hatshepsut, which is um, yep. an Egyptian queen which was really cool. She had a really, really cool, huge temple with a long line of columns. And mm -hmm. and some of these were restored to a degree. So I think this one was one of the ones that had been really restored to its original beauty, which was really cool to see. A lot of them were in more of a ruined state, but this one, they made it look like it was, you know, I think it was like 30% original and then the other 70% had been restored back but it looked just the way it would have looked when they had yeah, been there. Yeah, some of the temples, they were going through painstaking, the painstaking process of getting off literally millennia of dirt and grime, so they were revealing the paint that they used, yeah. you know, 2,000, 5,000 years ago, whatever. It was it was pretty incredible. Like, you, you could see the before and after, like, this is how dirty it was, and then after they restored it, and it was, it was just really, really incredible. In case I haven't said that already. It, it was, was incredible. It was incredible. <laughs> One thing I remember at the hat chip suit. To, I remember our guide told us hat and a cheap suit. Hat, hat, suit. hat cheap suit. Hat cheap suit. Was the name of the temple. They had these guards there, um, which were kind of pushy. But they were there to make sure you didn't touch anything or do anything you weren't supposed to do. Um, but this is one of the scams you have to watch out for in Egypt the guards will come up and tell you some sort of, you know, random fact, probably that you kind of already knew, you know, like, oh, this is a chip suit. This is a statue of her. I'm like, yeah, it says it right there. And then they'd ask for a tip. So I remember, yeah, I remember like, that uh... specifically at that place that they were like really incessant of like following you around and trying to yeah, which... take a picture of you or do whatever they could to get like a little tip, which was kind of annoying, but... Yeah, as we said in the last video, it just made it really difficult to converse with any locals because they just wanted to get a tip out of you. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> a little bit. Um, and then one of the last spots that we saw on the tour was the Valley of the Kings. The Valley of Kings is where King Tut was discovered. Um, that's a really cool site because it doesn't look like a big temple or anything. It just looks like random hills and they hid all of these tombs because they didn't want smugglers to come Raiders in. of the Lost Ark. Yeah, to come and like get into these tombs. They were trying to keep Indiana Jones out of that area. Um, and that Yeah, was... like you wouldn't know there was anything there. It just looked like a random desert, like, it was the valley. Yeah, it was the banks like, of the crevasse. Nile and it was just, you know, kind of just a deserty little hilly area. 
we paid a fee to get in and you could go to three different tombs. And I think there's like 64 tombs that are excavated that you can go into in the Valley of the Kings. Yeah, you couldn't bring cameras. You had to like leave, straight up leave your camera out. There's no cameras allowed. Yeah. And that is where King Tut's mummy is. That's where he was discovered, his mummy and all the um, artifacts that are in the Egyptian museum, but his mummy is still there in the Valley of Kings, and that was an extra ticket that you had to buy, so. Yeah, and we did, because you can't go to the Valley of Kings and not see King Tut. No. Um, so that was really cool. Bucket list, check that one off. Yeah, I don't remember, unfortunately, how much it was. We'll look that up and put it in the YouTube video. Yeah, but King Tut's temple, like, wasn't that impressive. It's just the, like, Hollywood, you know, temple that everybody talks about and the big discovery of Egypt. What was in there was the impressive part, which yeah. is at the museum. But actually, the tombs were really cool. Most of the other ones, like, you go down underground, like, they're dug into the ground, and you go down these passageways just that have the most elaborate and intricate paintings and hieroglyphics which all mean something that they don't just randomly paint this stuff yeah to get them to the um next life or whatever yeah it was it was very very cool to see very dusty and definitely felt like indiana jones but the reason that king tut's temple wasn't all that ornate was he died unexpectedly he died very young so they hadn't had a chance to build his tomb yet and they actually were building a tomb for somebody else and gave him that one so it was you know a little smaller and different um, but it was still really incredible and then in Egypt you can go and see all the different things that were inside that temple when they found it but the cruise ended in Luxor um, at the temple of Luxor and that was really cool the um, we'll throw a couple pictures of that in the YouTube video that we're gonna make but yeah that's Luxor is a big um, it was the center of Egypt for a while. Yeah. I don't I don't know if capital is the right word, but yeah, Karnak Karnak and Temple of Luxor must do. It was very cool when we were there. It was yeah. incredible. It was incredible, guys. The whole Nile cruise was was a highlight of the trip. Obviously, you want to see the pyramids and that's great and definitely not to be missed. And Cairo was amazing, but the thing that I remember the most is that Nile cruise. It was it was just a yeah. really awesome experience, and I would definitely recommend that. And it was it was just nice as well. The one that we went on just was very clean, and we didn't have to worry about anything. The room was super nice, had great air conditioning. And it was. Yeah. So, one of the popular things you can do in Luxor is take a hot air balloon ride at um, dawn. Luxor is just temples on temples on temples, so yeah. you can go and fly over these Egyptian temples at dawn, which is amazing. We didn't go though because it was a little bit pricey and they said that if the wind doesn't blow just right, you won't actually go over the temples and Egypt is pretty polluted. So <laughs> you don't really get a clear um, view of all this stuff anyway. So we were like, eh, we'll just, we'll maybe save it for next time. But if that is something you'd like to do, that's a really, really popular thing to do in Luxor. So if you go to Egypt, I definitely recommend spend, uh, spending the night in Giza for the pyramids, spending mm -hmm. a few days in Cairo, um, going down to Aswan, Nubian villages. Uh, Abu Simbel. Abu Simbel. was really cool. Definitely recommend a Nile cruise, but if you aren't going to do anything like that, go to Luxor for all the temples there. Yeah. It's really amazing. But the Nile cruise, it showed us temples that we probably wouldn't have seen. No, no, um, def definitely wouldn't have. Because we made stops along the way in between Aswan and Luxor, like the Temple of Edfu and um, Ko Koomo. We went to a bunch of different ones. And it was a couple hundred bucks a person, but it was uh, worth it. Yeah, we stopped sure. at a lot of really cool spots. So. Yeah, it definitely made the trip. And then we spent one night in Luxor, and we just, we were, <laughs> we're, so, we're, we're over it. We were so exhausted at that point. Like <laughs> it was like two weeks in, or yeah, I don't even think we left. We Thirteen left. days in, we didn't even leave the hotel room. No, we were just exhausted. It was just such a draining trip. Yeah. It was it's great now, it's like great stories and great memories, but at the time it was just, 
very challenging. I it, I don't want to. It wasn't bad. Like that's not the the word. Like no. it wasn't a bad or terrible trip. We no. didn't really have any bad experiences. No, except maybe the cockroach. It trip. was just overwhelming. Yeah, it, it was, was over. It was cha It was challenging. Yeah, even as um, experienced travelers, it was a challenging trip for sure. One of the most rewarding again, and you should definitely do it. Um, but it was a hard place to travel. Yeah, so we then flew from Luxor back to Cairo, and then from Cairo to... Germany. Frankfurt. Yep. Yeah, on Lufthansa. And we ended up right back in uh, Oktoberfest, I think, so... Yeah, so we went to, like, a little German pub and, like, had some... Like, pretzels and brats. Oh, and it was amazing. It was Drank like, oh my god, beer. we're back in the Western world, and, like... We didn't have people haggling us, trying to sell us everything, and... yeah. Heckling us. Hassling. Hassling. <laughs> <laughs> One of those H words. Yeah. Yeah, and the German guy at the border was like the nicest German guy I think I've ever <laughs> encountered. Yeah, yeah it was, it was, was, like, oh, it was re yeah. refreshing. But. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for another um, Instagram Live next week, Monday. We'll have a vote on Instagram to see which... Next trip we're going to be talking about is going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific, depending on where you are. And if you're watching on YouTube, as always, hit that like button, the thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss these awkward travel chats or any other of our travel vlogs and amazing travel videos we're putting <laughs> up. This is Kelly and Kevin, the Awkward Tourist. Peace out. Stay safe. Bye.